Sue James, and today we have some very special guests. We have Louise Holzendorf Berman. I got that right, didn't I, Louise? <laughs> <laughs> I had to practice that one. And we are very honored uh, to have her in our home and, and to, for her to tell you her story. Uh, it has to be the Lord, and you're going to know before this time's out exactly what the Lord has done for her. And we're just going to sit here and, and talk with each other. Uh, she has invited her sister, Miriam Hunter, uh, with her because Miriam was with her when she was with her ordeal. And uh, she wanted uh, somebody to come here and help her tell her story. And now I'm going to get over here to Louise. Yes. Louise. What started out in your life in 1994 uh, that started uh, your trip to where you are today? Well, in 1994, I went in the hospital with pneumonia. First of all, I, uh, I didn't know I had pneumonia. It was this year, I call it walking pneumonia. I was in, um, I had a cold, but uh, I didn't feel real bad, and I didn't know um, I was very sick. And so um, about one o'clock that morning, I, um, when I opened, opened my eyes, I uh, felt a heavy pressing pressure on my chest. And you probably thought it was your heart. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And what is happening here, you know? Right. And um, then I couldn't breathe. I was having trouble breathing. And um, I said, oh, boy, something is wrong. And so I said, oh, I think I need to go to the hospital. And then I thought came to me, oh, you're going to have to go in the bathroom. You're going to have to go in the bathroom and get yourself together, you know, because I always had to look good everywhere I went, you know. Before. That was really important to you when yes. you were younger. Yes. Uh, <laughs> tell uh, the people out here just how you thought about yourself when you were younger. Let's start there. Okay. Okay. Okay, when I was young, I, um, I didn't like myself at all. I, uh, I was very, very skinny. And oh, I'd like to have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> but my, I compared myself with my sisters. They were not skinny. And so I just felt like, oh my goodness, what's wrong with me? I wanted to feel my clothes out, you know. And um, I watched a lot of TV, okay, and soap and, operas. And you got the wrong picture there, didn't you? Oh, yes, yes. I wanted to look like them. I wanted to wear their clothes. I wanted to act like them. And I was far from that. And a lot of young girls today get the wrong impression by looking at the TV and the women on there. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. So, um, and from then on, it just followed me through life. I was just, and I never could put on weight. And I was, you know, I just didn't like, like my hair. I didn't like my body at all. And I just didn't accept myself. Right. But, but, then, then, but then when you uh, finally had all those feelings about yourself, and then you found yourself, you become a school teacher. Yes. And then this thing struck you that you thought was pneumonia. That's right. Then what happened? And what happened? Okay, I was working at school, and um, I was um, working in the hallway and hanging pictures, and I remember feeling tired and sneezing a little. And um, I went in the classroom um, and laid my head down on the desk, okay. and I worked with children in the reading in the reading department. Right. And um, I was between classes. I had classes every 30 minutes. Right. And, and we will tell you that she is married and she has a wonderful husband named John. Yes. And uh, she asked him, see, because she has written, we'll even find out about that later, yes. uh, which I have read. And John, you asked John, something's wrong and you need to go to the hospital now. Right? Yes. Yes. What happened when you got there? And when I got there, okay. Um, we drove up to the emergency door, and John told me to go in, you know, at one part of the car. And so I went in, and I remember walking through the door with that saw in my arm. I don't remember anything else until, um, and then I was told, you know, John gave all of the information to the, to the receptionist, and uh, I just didn't remember anything else. 
when was the last time you remembered? Uh, what did you remember after that? What was the next thing you actually remembered? Okay, the next thing I remembered. Had you went through everything, or I remember being placed in a in a hospital room. I remember that, and my family told me I was laughing and talking to them. And um, was that right, Mary? Yes, that's true. Because the night that she was admitted, all of us ran to the hospital ourselves. Because I read in the book where you all are very close family, you believe in prayer, you believe gathering around whoever's sick or whoever needs it. Yes. Family is what we need around us when we have our problems. So go ahead and and they, they were there, and that's the last thing you remember them? Oh, yes, that's the last I do remember coughing. I was coughing. And um, from then on, I've been outside. It, it, everything was gone again. Um, okay. Mary, take it up a little bit of this and tell us what you remember happening then. Well, from there that night, Louise was um, in her hospital room, and we were all around, and we prayed, and we were having a good time. And the last word she said, were, um, she said, uh, I said, Louise, you think we need to call us up for Monday? And she said, oh, no, I'll be back in the classroom. That's no problem. <laughs> yes. Very concerned, that good teacher. And uh, from there, um, that's when we really realized that the doctor came in and told us that um, they really saw something on the wrong and that she had pneumonia. And just like she said, just thought it was walking in line. Right. And then proceeding from the other days coming in, they had to lose, you might want to tell them the type of coma that they put you in. Okay. Okay, like I said, first of all, it was pneumonia. And then it developed into adult ARDS, adult respiratory distress syndrome. And it just means the lungs just to stop working, period. Okay. And so it's putting too, too much stress on the body. And so they have to put me into a coma-induced state. A coma-induced state, yes. So you really never knew anything after that. No. Uh, so the family rallied around you, and what happened 